Hello, hello from Austin, Texas. Happy to be with you all today. I'm delighted um, to be invited and participate at least via video with you all. And um, unfortunately, I'm not able to join you because uh, we have South by Southwest and going on here in Austin, which is a significant event with 300,000 people. And we had a major showcase yesterday with Texas State at the W Hotel in Austin. It was fabulous. We had some 500 plus people show up. And uh, we have a lot of meetings and a lot of interaction going on this week. So hopefully next time I'll be with you in person. But let me start um, sharing my screen and getting into the presentation that I want you to see. And what I want to do is uh, basically walk you through it and uh, be able to set up the session. Uh, again, it's, it's a, a great honor to be at the India Smart Utility Week. Uh, I think that 2024 is going to be a fabulous year, a significant transformational year. Our session today is all about the utilization of utilities, the utilization roadmaps, and the digital twins. And I have the pleasure to lead my colleagues uh, by doing the overview intro to the session, which has some phenomenal state-of-the-art friends uh, sharing with you their knowledge. Uh, my name again, Andres Carvalho, CEO of CMG Consulting and Professor, Fellow, and Director at Texas State University. And I just wanted to share and set up this session with you about what's going on with digitalization overall. And obviously the utility sector is going through significant changes uh, of how digitalization is impacting their operations. And the big thing about it is the integration, if you will, of many digital technologies from smart metering, sensors, edge computing networks that are supposed to take us to the next level uh, of uh, transformation and innovation and uh, reality with enhanced resiliency, enhanced reliability, enhanced efficiency, and much, much better customer service. Uh, the adoption of all these technologies are to be guided by a strategic roadmaps uh, to move the transformation, the uh, consumption of suitable technologies, uh, the integration of timelines, investments, and expected outcomes in a much more optimized, cohesive way. Uh, and the use of digital twin platform is a critical aspect of this digital shift, offering virtual replicas of all assets, allowing for real-time monitoring simulation and predictive analysis, something that is really um, missing in how we run operations um, day to day. Now, why utilities must embrace this transformation? Well, embracing the digitalization of power grids offers electric utilities way too many benefits, including obviously enhanced efficiency, resiliency, asset management, grid modernization, customer engagement, and perhaps the most important one, data-driven decision-making. By leveraging, by leveraging digitalization, roadmaps, and digital twin platforms, utilities can develop strategic plans, deploy innovative technologies, and optimize grid operations to meet the evolving needs of customers, regulations, regulators, stakeholders, in an increasingly digital and interconnected world. Uh, so that we can function more like an Amazon or any other significant large digital uh, platform in the world. So how do we get there? How do we start? How do we make these things happen? And again, my peers will dive into all these elements in a deeper way and share use cases. But it all starts with a roadmap. Uh, and, and actually, you got to have a framework to build that roadmap. And digitalization roadmaps provide utilities with strategic framework for optimizing asset management practices. 
selecting the best technologies and improving flexibility and scalability of the power grid network. Digitalization generates vast amounts of data from sensors, meters, and many other grid devices. And by leveraging data analytics tools and techniques, utilities can extract value insights to support data-driven decision-making processes like never before. The utilization roadmaps help utilities define data governance policies, establish data analytic capabilities, and develop predictive models to optimize grid operations, improve energy efficiency, and enhance grid reliability. Digital twin platforms are uh, gaining momentum as becoming the end all be all to map all assets at a utility. And by leveraging the digital twin platforms, utilities can create virtual replicas of physical assets, such as substations, feeders, reclosures, transformers, distribution lines, transmission lines, sensors, network gear, and much more. These digital twin platforms enable utilities to simulate different operating conditions, assess performance, and optimize asset utilization leading to cost savings and improve asset longevity. Now, there's clearly there are some significant challenges ahead that can be overcome, but we must be aware of them. Utility culture is one, 130 years doing the same thing, must change to enable a two-way power flow or multi-way power flow to a two-way data flow or multi-way data flow of how the grid should be managed and balanced going forward at either 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz. Physical and cybersecurity, investment in sustainability, regulatory change, and last but not least, better customer engagement. Digitalization allows utilities to engage with customers in a new and innovative ways, empowering them to make informed decisions about their energy usage and participate in demand side management programs. Digital platforms enable utilities to provide personalized energy use insights, offer energy efficiency tips, and facilitate billing and payment processes through user-friendly interfaces, enhancing customer satisfaction and loyalty. Now, there are some significant trends impacting the industry we cannot be ignored. And obviously, these trends impact different jurisdictions, regions, and utilities differently. But clearly, overall, renewable energy integration is the biggest one, impacting the bulk grid through transmission uh, and centralized generation. Uh, decentralization in distributed energy resources is the emerging super challenge of balancing the grid at subcycle times. Digitalization and asset analytics is a great opportunity on how we can move from a reactive world to a proactive world on how we manage our power grid and its operations and its in, in, in interaction with customers. Electrification of transportation is sort of the big genie out of the bottle. Uh, EVs are happening, they're coming, they're interconnecting to the grid every day and they're starting to create a disruption at the edge of the grid that must be managed carefully. Energy storage, it's an answer both at the central station level and at the distributor level to make the grid balance in real time, sub-cycle times. And it should be highly leveraged uh, opportunity for all. Uh, resiliency and grid security, will get more difficult as many, many, many devices, millions, hundreds of millions, billions of devices are impacting the grid like never before. Uh, and obviously there will be a lots of regulatory changes and policy initiatives that will change the rules of the game. That will make, um, you know, some difficulties and some hurdles for many utilities, perhaps be, by changing business models, by changing compensation strategies. Uh, another big trend is customer expectations and engagement. Our competition is now the utility next door. Our competition is Amazon or Alibaba or, um, you know, the banking industry or the airline industry. Or It's all about the customer experience and how customers want to use everything on their phone and have um, instant 
uh, connection, instant information about their package, the route, the this and the that, and the utilities need to embrace this. Uh, and then last but not least, obviously climate change and sustainability is a big mega trend impacting what's going on in the industry. Now for me and my takeaways is simple. You know, at Austin Energy from 2003 to 2010, uh, we started the first journey of grid modernization driven by a self-created smart grid framework and roadmap that I led. Uh, and we executed that with a world-class integration of powerful technologies from ABB, GE, IBM, Oracle, Cisco, Dell, and Lendis and Gear that deliver the very first smart grid in Austin uh, in the world. And since then, I've had the pleasure to help Dubai, Turkey, Brazil, Australia, and 17 utilities in the U.S. Uh, to build their own version of a smart grid. Now, it, it clearly it's a journey. Clearly, it's not easy. Clearly, there are a lot of complexities and timelines, but it's been, uh, you know, happening. And as I see what's coming and what, when I see looking back, this thing that I see missing the most, unless you have fiber to every element of your own grid today, which some utilities do, uh, not many, but some do, uh, would be the fact that we are missing today uh, broadband wireless for real-time monitoring and control. And I think the answer to that is private 4G and 5G. I think that the meter being the edge device of the utility should be on a private 4G, 5G network and every element that is managing every asset on the grid, sensors, the transformers, the energy storage, the reclosures, the feeders, the in, uh, interrupters, anything like that, you know, should be managed on a private 4G, 5G, the utility controls that cannot be hacked by some third party, Twitter, Facebook user, but is actually controlled and dedicated 100% to the utility. I would hope the countries uh, would embrace the notion of allowing utilities to have their own frequencies, to build their own private 4G and 5G networks uh, so that we can really deliver this sub-cycle time, uh, multi-power delivery, multi-consumption, multi-data management, multi-data consumption, multi-data delivery network that will have hundreds of millions, billions of devices at the edge of the grid, uh, interconnecting, interacting, enabling things like virtual power plants and transactive energy and the like, having every vehicle move to be an electric vehicle uh, and having the ability to do vehicle to grid balancing and as the vehicles sit in the parking lots of their houses or in the parking lots of a Walmart or in the parking lots of an airport. Um, all this infrastructure is going to be interconnected, interactive, real time. And so it's been a pleasure to give you a quick rundown of this session. And I look forward to uh, getting the feedback from you all uh, enjoy your next uh, few days, uh, and uh, hopefully this session will enlighten you in a big way as my peers come uh, and go deeper into everything that I've shared with you briefly. Uh, I look forward to, again, um, uh, enjoying uh, India in the future, and I wish you all the best. Thank you for having me uh, from Austin, Texas again, Andres Carvalho. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, and I will um, stop sharing now uh, and come back to the screen perhaps for one last time and say goodbye. And thank you very much.